Thanks for doing this, Kelsey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am having fun the best I can. Yeah. <laughs> are you Are you in Red Deer? Yeah. It looks cold there. Are you cold? Oh, I'm freezing. I I'm doing these uh, in my porch, and it's like not yeah. heated, so it's like probably like minus five in here. Can you see my breath? I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have like a blanket on me right now, and. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay warm. But it's actually not bad. I have a coffee, so I'm good. <laughs> Are you in Saskatoon? Yeah. I'm yeah. in Saskatoon. So I feel like we haven't talked in like years. It's been a while, yeah. Are you uh keeping sane? You know what? It's hard. It's it's very hard. Uh on that my uh my mental health is not doing so great mm -hmm. at the moment. You're, you're, you're not alone. <laughs> I, I feel know. like the whole, the, whole, the whole world's going through a, a change and it's like, it's, it's a lot to take in. It takes a little time to kind of get used to the slowdown. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys over there, you aren't feeling it yet, but here we're at like uh, just over a thousand. So people are definitely freaking out over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people need to not freak out. Doesn't yeah. matter how, how crazy it gets, like it you can't freak out. You gotta I keep thinking I'm gonna wake up and it's gonna be just a dream. <laughs> right? No, I know it's everyone's got that weird feeling. It's like a surreal, surreal feeling, eh? Mm-hmm. I wanted to, to start this with this video to kind of lighten the mood. <laughs> okay. Take a take a look. Uh, I'm just gonna get this set up. Boom, boom. But I mean, hopefully you'll be able to hear the sound. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. Listen to the listen to this guy. Go ahead. Hello. A smile can be very contagious. <laughs> you can catch it like the flu. Someone smiled at me today, and I started smiling too. And when I went around the corner, this guy seen my grin. And when he started smiling, I knew I passed it on to him. Mm -hmm. Then I got to thinking just what a smile is worth. A smile like ours could travel all around the earth. So if you feel a smile coming on, don't keep it on detected. Smile at someone next to you and we'll get the whole darn world infected. Ah, woo! <laughs> uh, what do you think of that guy? I think he's sweet. I think he's got the right attitude. What's that, sorry? So I think he's sweet. He's got the right attitude. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like a lot of people have the wrong attitude right now are just like yeah. just so afraid and so panicked and so, yeah. I feel like a lot of people, they're thinking about this the whole wrong way. Like they're, they're panicking, they're staying inside, you know, they're, they're not using this time to further personal growth or even like take a moment to reflect on like themselves and, and see what they can do better with themselves or with their lives, or even just to like slow down for a minute. Mm -hmm. Everyone has such crazy busy lives. Like why not just take this time to slow down, maybe do some uh, personal thinking, some meditation, some reflection. Mm, I love how that's been such a common theme about with the people I've talked with, like through this. It's just like, yeah, take a breath, put things into perspective. And it's like, I, I feel like it's the problem is it's so easy to get stuck in that because like it's 24 hour news now. And like, it's, it, I, I think that's the problem, right? It's all people here and all people see if they're on their phones. So unless you get away from your phone, unless you get away from technology and get out of your house into like a path by the river or something like you're going to be stuck in that kind of like what's going to happen next mindset mm -hmm. which for most people is like too much frightening <laughs> but what have you been doing to kind of self-care work towards have you been cleaning baking what's what's your thing so for me i am still a student i yeah. am still in school and they transitioned everything online. Mm -hmm. This is very hard for me because I'm in my last semester of classes before I get my diploma. Yeah. So when they did that, I was already struggling in one class. 
because I was already struggling, I ended up withdrawing from the class. Uh, so right. I am not getting my diploma this semester and it's hit quite hard. Yeah. It has, I still have my other class, but the problem is we're down to the nitty gritty, you know, final exams are coming up. We have a group project that's due and everyone's in a panic. And I'm just like, you know, we just got to like buckle down and get this done. You know, April 15th, we're done this. We can move on to other things. But I mean, for me, I'm just thinking about what's next. So I'm trying to get the motivation to sit down and study. I'm trying to spend time with Vitaly when he's home. You know, I find it hard. I hit my mental block, my mental wall. I find it hard to focus on anything. Yeah. I have attempted to get outside, get active, and that helps a lot. But I mean, after this final exam, I still have to go ahead and get my life insurance license. So it's not even, I'm done. I still have more studying to do. I still have yeah. all this work ahead of me. And so all I see is a big old mountain that I have to get up on. So <laughs> I guess the importance is to just take it step by step and not let yourself get overwhelmed with things. Right. Yeah. But it, I guess because of the events and everything, it's easy to one thing leads to another. You start worrying about one thing, you start worrying about all your life decisions. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's a, again, it's to slow your Everything's slowing down, so you need to slow down and just focus on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. just like, That's hard. That, that is very hard. I think, it all, sorry, I think it all starts with just slowing your body down. A lot of times when we can't slow down, it's like, hey, like you got to tune in with your body. Tune in with your breath. Um, mm -hmm. I find if you, a lot of people don't know about that. A lot of people don't know like, hey, I'm freaking out of my mind. If I can like slow down my breathing, my thoughts will slow down. My mind will slow down. It's like try it right now. So like just take a deep breath. It's like you instantly notice it, don't you? Yeah, I've I've done hot yoga. I know exactly yeah, you, yeah, but, that mind space and everything. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I think we just always need like reminders of that because it's easy to forget. Mm-hmm. So it's good to remind your friends, family, everyone that like, hey, take a breath, breathe. Yeah. You're okay. I know a lot of people have been phoning me lately and it's like, they're like, I hit a mental wall. Like I'm breaking down. I'm like, it's okay. That's good. It's okay. It's okay to <laughs> hit a mental wall. It's okay to break down. Let yourself do that. Let yourself go through those emotions. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to pull up uh, another screen here. Okay. Are you going to say something? No, no. <laughs> This is good. I, I really like connecting with people like this and I like how you want to do, to do this. So it's good. I think everyone needs it right now. So I've been way too introverted lately. So. Oh, can you see this one? Yeah. Small. We should consider every day lost or we should consider every day lost on which we have not danced at least once. <laughs> what do you think about that? I am extremely clumsy, so I don't dance. <laughs> <laughs> what I, like I understand to, the concept, though. Yeah, I, what I like to take away from that is, like, not even just dancing, but just, like, the aspect of dance, of being just, like, groovy and letting loose and not really, like, thinking. Like, when you're dancing, like, really dancing, you're not really thinking about what you're doing. You're just kind of lost <laughs> in the moment. So, yeah. that's it. so every day, if we're not lost in the moment a little bit, it's a day loss. I, I do have those days. I feel like they're they're coming fewer and fewer now, but mm -hmm. I definitely have my goofier days and <laughs> I think you gotta let these guys definitely help with it. Oh my gosh, animals are so good in this time, eh? Like they really right. ground you out. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm blessed to have there's a few cats in our in our house here that I'm living at, so it's good. They're so good. They're so low maintenance and they come and they hang out as, as soon as you need it. Right. Mm -hmm. Whenever you need that cuddle, they're right there. It's like a therapy session. Yeah. The most affordable therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. How is, uh, 
how's your relationship been affected by all this? Do you guys find you're like going crazy together? Do you guys find you're helping to each other through? Do you guys live, you guys live together? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so do you guys find it's like draining, helpful? I mean, it's, it's got to be difficult, but I, I feel like it's probably a good thing. So we have a very strong relationship. We honestly, the biggest arguments we've ever had is like, his political views or conspiracy theories that he believes in and I don't. And, you yeah. know, I consider myself the optimist of the relationship, but actually in this situation, he's the optimist. He That's thinks good. that everything's going to be much better once, once everything goes back to normal. And I don't seem to think so for me, I have a business education. I have a business background. Yeah the economy and what's going to happen what's going to happen to consumer spending yeah. and and stuff like that when once this is gonna all become normal again and he's very much like everything's going to be fine people are going to get out of this they're going to run to the movie theaters they're going to run to the bars and the restaurants yeah. and everything will be great again i'm just like i don't think it's going to be like that mm-hmm. but this That's, is the only it's hard to know there that we actually have a real conversation on. I mean, he's working. He got a job in grocery at a co-op. He's a meat cutter, which is what he did when he came here from Ukraine. Yeah. And so he enjoys it. He's got a stable 40 hours a week and I'm home cause I'm an industry person and just trying to get yeah. used to this home life and not going to school and yeah, I guess it's a lot different for a lot of people like me, myself, as like a photographer, videographer, I used to all I worked from home at home for five years. So like, <laughs> I guess like it's not as much as an adjustment for me, but I, I get it for other people. It's like probably like crazy because I remember my first couple of weeks of that, like it's hard to find structure and routine in that because yeah. you're not going somewhere else to work and you don't know when to shut off work and you don't know when to, you know, kind of structure your day in a way. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a learning experience. And I was an industry person, right? So, I mean, I had two classes during the day. Um, I am still employed by Sun Life. So I was slowly learning uh, life insurance while attending meetings. And, and, you know, I was in and out of the office every once in a while. And my industry life, I would work till two in the morning. So my body is still stuck on the two in the morning and I don't know how to get out of it. I'm just, I'm trying to find a routine. I can't. Yeah. You're always up late. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta really tire yourself out one day or something and go to, make yourself, go to, go to bed early or something. I know sleep, sleep schedules have always been an issue for me too. It's always like, Oh, mm-hmm. sometimes I'm really inspired in the nighttime and don't sleep, and, but it's bad. I know like sleep's so important and I've really trying to put a lot of emphasis on that lately because like you, you sleep bad, your hormones are all messed up, your mood's all messed up the next day. Like it affects a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to pull up a, you know, the screen cause I like these. <laughs> yeah. They just kind of get us chatting in different ways. I really love that video of that older man though it's like the, that to me that shows like the most vulnerable people can have an optimistic mindset and it's like that's important fear is way worse than any sickness it's so debilitating it makes you like go crazy you just go crazy you lose your mm-hmm. money well, this is interesting um no one is da- more dangerously insane than one who is sane all the time he has like a steel bridge without flexibility and the order of his life is rigid and brittle. <laughs> this is an interesting one. I like that one. So to me that speaks of like, you have to be okay with change and learn to embrace it and not fight it. Mm-hmm. I, I noticed with myself in the first couple of weeks of this was like, I was so resistant to it. And I was so resistant. Like, I don't want to slow down. Like I want to keep working. I want to do all these things. It's like, no, you just got to accept change as it comes and do what you can in the moment. Mm-hmm. When I read that, I think, you know, I, I don't have a whole lot of friends, but all mm-hmm. the friends that I have 
Yeah. None of them are sane. Like I would never describe them as sane people. I would describe them as crazy out there, not ordinary people. Yeah. So I, I really like that. Cause that means I surround myself with good people. Mm, so otherwise life is boring. <laughs> yeah, life needs to be shook enough, I agree. Mm-hmm. And that's why that's like why I'm always like so positive in these times. I'm like, wow, people are like understanding what's important and like this is good. This is good. As much as it can be viewed in not a good life. I'm still I'm having a hard time with that. I Me too. I I'm usually an extrovert. And okay. this has got me so shook up in, in, in such a way that I just, I think I hit like the wall and then there was the depression and it's just mm-hmm. one thing after the other. And when you live with someone that doesn't believe in, in mental illness or doesn't really understand it per se, because he grew up there, there was no such thing, right? You just, if... If you were depressed, you just, you know, your parents told you to get over it. Yeah. And so for me, struggling with this kind of stuff, it's like, I don't have that help. So, but it's, I don't know. I I can't see the end either, right? Because we we can't predict this. No. You don't don't know when it's going to be over. So how do you know when -hmm. you're going to feel better? You don't. Right. So I guess the key is to learn how to feel okay with uncertainty. Is to, and I know I'm myself, I feel like I've been doing that for the last like couple years where like, cause of running my own business and just going through life challenges. Like I feel like life is very uncertain in a way anyway. So mm-hmm. I feel like this is a good wake up call to like, push us into uncertainty and learn to learn to be okay with it in a way or learn to like deal with those emotions. I think I, I like to control situations. I like to be yeah. able to control situations and I can't control this. And that is hard yeah. for me. That to give is up very control. Hard. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of people will find a lot of peace in these times, if they can give up that control, if they can surrender, if they can be like, what will happen will happen and I will be okay. I will be okay. It's okay. (laughs) Because the mind can't, the mind can't grasp this. And that's what's (laughs) causing people issues. Yeah. Because they want control. We always want control. And it's the, the unknown factor of like is my family gonna be okay i'm all the way over here i have a grandmother that overcame cancer and she's got a weakened immune system i have a mother who is sick with god knows what all the time she has problems all the time she's always in and out of the hospital yeah and you know you just you gotta worry you don't have to worry though you don't though I do. No, you don't. The beauty, what does worry ever solve? What have you ever solved for you? It doesn't solve anything. It's just, it's a natural instinct. You just, maybe it's more of a woman thing than a man thing, but I I just. It's both. It's both. I agree. Yeah. It's a, it's a natural thing, but it's also a a thing that is like, you have to look at it, I I feel, and be like, is this serving me? Mm -hmm. Is this me attaching to these thoughts serving me at this time and i feel like 95 percent of the time to 99 percent of the time it's no this is detrimental this is making me panic this is causing my own health to suffer it's like i need to stop this you know but then again if you look at the other side of it if you don't if you don't check in with the people that you love and you don't ask them i'm not saying don't check in you should don't check in no you should have compassion for them and check in with them and love them. But worrying is like stressing about it and being in fear. That's worry. Yeah. So I think you can still do those things without worrying. Right. I think that those things have caused me to check in more. Okay. That's fair. 
Mm -hmm. I agree. And like, we, we take our health for granted so much. Like my whole family, you look at it and it is health problem on top of health problem on top of health problem. My dad is the only healthy one and he is 50 years old. He's going to live to be like 130 years old. I swear. (laughs) That's good. Yeah. It's, this is a a time where you're like, yeah, you, you worry about those people, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I, I also feel like it's, it's kind of just wakes us up to the fact that, um, that yeah, we are so fragile and life is fragile. We could lose anyone at any time. Once again, you know, mm-hmm. so it's good to be reminded of that. I think. Yeah. So it's like, cause yeah, like you said, people are worrying and breaking down. And I think that's, I've talked about this with other people. It's bringing out like beauty in people and bringing out like, like even having this conversation is like, when would we ever have like a conversation like this? That's like really like almost like a heart to heart, you know, like down to earth. Yeah. That's not superficial in any sense. Like, what are you doing? Uh, or like, you know, like how it used to be. <laughs> if that makes sense. Just chatting to chat. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, do you want to take um, a little break? I've been kind of doing like little intermissions at these. So if you want to like yeah. grab, a, grab a water, take five minutes for yourself and then we'll chat a bit more. I'll call you back. Okay. Sounds well, good. Sounds yeah. good. Okay. Talk soon. Bye. I think this is like the grand, like, we were talking about at the beginning, like you were saying, like in Alberta, like everyone's losing their mind. Mm-hmm. Chaos is what we've lost touch with. This is why it's given a bad name. It is feared by the dominant archetype of our world, which is ego, which clenches because its existence is defined in terms of control. Our egos are breaking. I absolutely love chaos. I love... <laughs> I love chaos in the sense that I, my life is chaotic. It it always is. It's never, it's never the same day twice. It's Mm -hmm. never like I can predict how this is going to go, how that's going to go. Or, well, this is the ultimate chaos. You should be like thriving. (laughs) I wish. I wish it does. It's a different kind of chaos, isn't it? Yeah yeah well i'm sure good things will come from it they always do i hope so i you said vitaly vitaly has the the optimistic attitude with it yeah he does that's good i i've met a lot of people that do have that so it's like that old man at the beginning yeah you can like i've noticed that right now like if you go out for a walk and you're smiling at waving at people like because people are kind of like looking down and like scared you can tell they're scared like that makes the world of a difference it depends on where you are in saskatoon but yes i agree with you <laughs> i think anywhere why not no some neighborhoods you can't walk through and smile at people it's well it's a little i guess i i, I don't know man where do you live? In, well, I live in City Park. In City Park? Yeah. It's not terrible, but the further west you go, like we grew up in Confederation Park, right? Yeah. Closer to Confed, closer to Alphabet City. You're, yeah. You're taking sure. chances. That's true. But I mean, you can always get out of there and go by the river or something and then mm-hmm. engage with people. So I know it's here, yeah. here it's different. There's homeless people everywhere and you got to be careful. I had a friend that got stabbed on his way to work. Yeah. I think it's just important not to fear people and not, and realize that most people are good. Even the scary looking ones. <laughs> most of them can be good. Yeah. Now here the economy has broken a lot of spirits and yeah. that makes people do some pretty terrible things. That's when you need the smiles even more and the waves and the hellos and how's it going and instead of like I did, shutting, I did shutting that down. A lot yesterday on my walk. Didn't it feel great? Well, saying hello to people, I I noticed there was a lot of, you know, like moms with their kids and stuff like that and you you wanna make sure that they're not 
don't know. Right. But I mean, talking to someone, I know, I know. And I, I think people need to kind of realize that it's really low risk to talk to someone from a little ways away. Like it's, you're not going to, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. People got to get over that, I think. But I'm no expert, so. Yeah. Anyway. Um, that was good, Kelsey. Thanks for chatting with me. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. I like to hear other people's perspective on things and what people are going <laughs> through, so it's good. We can all kind of help each other out that way.